siblings in the spirit, grace and peace to you from God. From God, peace to you. Together, let us praise God in the presence of love. Love. Together, let us praise God in the companionship of the risen Christ. The risen Christ, source of truth, who abides with us now. Together, let us praise God in this time of worship. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Church in Cambridge on this final Sunday of the Easter season. Welcome to those here in person and those joining us online. Welcome no matter who you love or what your pronouns are. Welcome no matter your age, race, or class. Welcome to those who are certain and to those who have a lot of questions. Welcome no matter where you are on the journey of life or faith. We're so glad you're here. My name's Rich Good. I've had a lot of jobs here at First Church. And in thinking about what to say, I wasn't, the head, I wasn't a member of Building and Grouts because I like fixing old things though I do. I wasn't a member of uh, deacons because I enjoy ministering to others because I do, or a member of the finance committee, your current treasurer, because I love me a good spreadsheet, because I do. <laughs> I'm here because this is my home, and home is where I like to do my part. Today's Confirmation Sunday, when we celebrate the spiritual journeys of the young people who gathered throughout this year to learn about our tradition and explore their questions and belief about faith. And now today, let us continue in worship. Friends, let's be vulnerable with ourselves and with God. Consider your needs for mercy, healing, and peace. In this time of silence, open your heart and your mind to the boundless nature of God's grace and love. Let us pray for healing, pardon, and peace. God of justice, when we settle for the way things are instead of the way you would have them to be, forgive us. When we hold on to our fear or our limited vision, increase our trust in you. When we offer charity, fail the work for justice, show us what we want. Rise up in us and give us your strength. Restore our hope and renew our courage. Friends, hear the good news of Easter. At Christ's birth, God made the Word flesh. At Christ's death, God raised the living Word to new life. This word continues to live in us and our bodies, no matter what we have done or how far we may stray. Hear it now, saying to your heart, I'm right here. I love you, always. And you can always start again. Receive this good news, embody the joy, and share a sign of peace with one another.
First Church's confirmation program is a one-year journey for teens, usually taking place every other year. The pandemic upended our schedule a bit, leading us to engage this group of ninth and 10th graders rather than eighth and ninth graders, as we usually do. This year, six young people participated in confirmation, and they have all been valued members of our class. We are grateful for the ways in which each confirmand added to the experience. We are also grateful and so, so pleased that all six of them have chosen to affirm their baptisms, be confirmed, and join First Church. Praise be to God. (laughs) By the mercy of God and the following young people are seeking to affirm their faith and to join with us in fellowship as members of First Church in Cambridge. When I call your name, please join us up here on the chancel. Graham Hendren Funk, Winifred Hendren Funk, Owen Alexander Jones, Campbell Kathleen Pelton Cairns, Eric Isaiah Stoffer, and Ada Grace Lamaster, who I am looking at right now because she is watching our live stream. Ada is rowing in a regatta in Worcester. Her boat is doing really well. They (laughs) won a race this morning, and they have the finals this afternoon. So Ada Grace, you are here with us, and I know you will be answering these questions. Your parents will be laying on hands with you where you are, and when we see you again, we will baptize you, and we can't wait. (laughs) All right, but before these five uh, can be confirmed, we have to baptize two of them, and their sibling, Malcolm. So I invite Malcolm Funk to come forward. I invite you all to stand around the font. Sarah and Brian, their parents are welcome to come forward. Audrey Bellinger is our deacon. We're gonna have a party up here. And (laughs) young children, I need your help to pour the water in the font. So any young children who would like to come forward, we're gonna gather by the, the railing over here. Come on over. And I'm gonna turn it over to Lexi. Thank you for your help with this water, guys. And thank you, Sarah, for your help as well. Come on up. Don't be shy. (laughs) Have a seat. You guys get the best seat in the house. Perfect. Our first joy of the day. (laughs) Friends, we are about to participate in the sacrament of Christian baptism. We will soon pour water over these beloved children of God as a sign of new life and belonging in Christ. Through this sacrament, God claims them as God's beloved, showers them with gifts and graces, welcomes them into the household of forgiveness, and seals them in love for eternal life. With the ones who are baptized today, let us also be grateful for our own blessed lives and all the gifts we have received. And with them, we reaffirm our own solemn and joyful promises to be disciples of Christ and to walk in his way. Freddie, Malcolm, and Graham, do you wish to be baptized into the faith and family of Christ? Wonderful. Do you promise to resist the power of evil? Do you desire the freedom of new life in Christ? And do you hold Jesus at the center of your faith? And do you promise to be Christ's disciples and to follow in his way? And now we have some questions for you all as First Church. Christ, do you who will witness this sacrament promise Freddie, Graham, and Malcolm your love, support, and care? 
We do. We do. Will you help them to grow in faith and witness with them to the love and mercy of Christ? We will, with the help of God. Do you renew your own promises to live in the freedom of Christ and resist the power of evil? We do, with the help of God. Okay, I need your help now. Can you stand up? Let's pour some water for them. Can you walk up there and pour the water into the font? Thank you, everyone. And now let us pray. Let us pray together that the Holy Spirit will bless this water of life. On the first day of creation, the Spirit of God moved across the waters, bringing forth light and life. And on this new day, Holy Spirit, Stir these waters again and let them be a sign of God's endless love for Graham, Freddie, and Malcolm. Make them new creations by your grace, O God, and place your seal of love upon their hearts that they may know the peace of your forgiveness and the consolation of the company of the faithful. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Ready. By what full name do you wish to be called? I baptize you, Winifred Hendred Funk, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Malcolm, by what full name do you wish to be called? Malcolm Hendred Funk. I baptize you, Malcolm Hendren Funk, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Graham. Um, I, I, think. I baptize you, Graham Hendren Funk, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. The Spirit of God be upon you all, our new siblings in faith and members of the Church Universal. Please rise as you are able. Beloved in Christ, let us give thanks. Yes, we thank you, God, for these precious lives entrusted to our care and for the waters of baptism that mark us as your people. Thank you for the gifts your Spirit gives us in this sacrament, and for life in the church where we help each other grow. Give to Freddie, Graham, and Malcolm strength for life's journey, courage in the time of trial, the joy of faith, the freedom of love and the comfort of everlasting life. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. First Church, rejoice and be glad. New life in the Spirit among us is celebrated today. Let us sing Amen with joyful hearts. <laughs>
You may be seated. (laughs) We are now ready for the rite of confirmation. These five young people, plus Ada, our sixth young person, have found a home in our family of faith. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Spirit to affirm their baptisms and enter into covenant with us as members. Now the promises for you. Friends in Christ, in the presence of God and your faith community, I ask you, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Christ? Do you hold Jesus Christ as the center of your faith? Do you promise to follow Christ's path, offering compassion and working for justice? Do you promise to grow with this congregation in faith and further us in Jesus' mission in the world? Freddie, Graham, Owen, Campbell, Eric, and Ada are asking to be confirmed in the faith and family of Jesus Christ. You have heard the promises they have made. What is your will? By God's grace, they are worthy. Let them be confirmed. So as the candidates kneel here, we invite their parents to come forward now for the laying on of hands. Parents can come and stand behind their confirmands. And in a moment, the congregation will be invited to extend a hand of blessing. Everybody find their kid or kids. (laughs) Perfect. Everyone matched up (laughs) great. This ancient practice that we are about to engage in is a physical reminder and conduit of God's love and Holy Spirit in this world and in this place. So... Thank you all parents for being that embodied uh, love of God today. Let's raise our hands in blessing and pray for these candidates of confirmation before the laying on, on of hands. Gracious God, hear our prayer for these young people whom we so dearly love. Surround them with the care of family and friends Strengthen and multiply their gifts that they have already. Grant them compassion, gentleness, and grace for themselves and others. Grant them hope and peace when life is hard. Grant them happiness and courage to create a more just and loving world. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, confirm the faith of these disciples of Christ, Graham Hendren Funk, Winifred Hendren Funk, Owen Alexander Jones, Campbell Kathleen Pelton Cairns, Eric Isaiah Stauffer, and Ada Grace Lamaster. Guard and defend them from every danger. Enrich them with gifts for the service of others and give them the joy of your presence now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please rise. Yeah, you guys can stand up with your parents. Freddie, Graham, Eric, Campbell, Ada, and Owen, we are so glad for your journeys that have brought you here today. It has been a long journey. We give thanks for every movement and moment in the spirit that has given you life. For this church and every community of faith that will be your spiritual home. And we celebrate your presence here in this congregation today, First Church in Cambridge Congregational United Church of Christ. And we now invite all of you to join us, join the new members in reading the covenant of First Church in Cambridge as printed in your bulletin. We We who are now brought together and united into one church 
under the Lord Jesus Christ, our head, in such sort as becometh all those whom he hath redeemed and sanctified to himself, do solemnly and religiously, as in his most holy presence, promise and bind ourselves to walk in all sin ways, according to the rule of the gospel, and in all sincere conformity to his holy ordinances, and in mutual love and respect each to the other, so near as God shall give us grace. We welcome you with joy into the common life of this church as we make our way together on this lifelong journey of faith. Congratulations and welcome. Let us pray. Living God, you meet us in unexpected places and surprise us with the abundance of your love. Feed us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may follow you this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. The nations are in an uproar. Empires crumble. You utter your voice. The earth melts. The Lord is with us. God Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations you have brought on the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. know that I am God. That line from Psalm 46 is well known and well used. We at First Church have used these words when we as a community have needed words of comfort and words of beauty many a time. A quick Google search of this verse brings up a handful of meditative songs and soothing nature scenes on YouTube. (laughs) And I recall learning a breath prayer that one of our community ministers taught us with these words last, a couple years ago as well. There's a whole bunch of hits on Pinterest and Etsy for loving hand 
lettered artwork on greeting cards, mugs, t-shirts, you name it. All filed under inspirational quotes. And our confirmands too, you just received a watercolor print of a delicate leafy branch with these words printed underneath. Confirmands, do you want to hold them up so we can see? Or if not, to get a closer look, anyone find them at the reception after worship and eat some cake and look at the print. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) There you go. Thank you for showing and telling. (laughs) Be still and know that I am God. The words are calming and grounding. Just saying them aloud makes me relax my shoulders and breathe a little more deeply. But what about the rest of Psalm 46? Is it all about meditating in silence to gain personal insight? Let's go back and take a look. And confirmants, just think of this as an extension of our class last fall entitled Meeting God Through Scripture. You thought you were done with us. (laughs) (laughs) The psalm begins by naming God as our refuge and our strength and a very present help. We are encouraged to not be afraid, to know that God's got this. We hear this phrase that God is with us and is our refuge twice more, once in the middle and at the end, three times in 11 verses. That's something to pay attention to, right? But what else is there? Let's pull out some other images in this psalm. The mountains shake in the heart of the sea. The waters roar and foam. The nations are in uproar. Empires crumble. Whoa, not so calm and quiet. Perhaps God's instruction is less meditative and more of an order, kind of like a parent talking to a squirming child. Hush, be silent, still, be still, enough. Or maybe God is saying, hey, it's okay. Life is stormy and can feel out of control. Know that I am here with you. Get out of your own head. Let's ride the waves together. Be still and know that I am God. However we hear it, these words seem like sound advice to remember, especially on this journey of exploring faith through confirmation. And what a confirmation year it's been. Six students, two teachers, two guest speakers, and a whole lot of showing up week after week, bringing snack week after week to talk about our tradition of Christianity and our relationship to our faith. Back in September at our orientation meeting with students and parents, we asked students and parents, What is confirmation exactly? And we got some really great responses. It's joining the church. It's a class that prepares you. It's a chance to think about why be church and why be a member. It's a place to ask the question, what do I believe? It's a developmental bridge. It's your heritage. And importantly, It's your journey, not your parents' journey. Amen. The ways in which the confirmands claim this journey as their own continue to amaze us. We have learned that these young people have a lot to teach us adults. Each confirmand wrote a statement of faith, which they read aloud in our last session a few weeks ago. Their statements are thoughtful and heartfelt, revealing an understanding of how one's faith can hold questions and uncertainties. Their courage and their comfort with honesty, their willingness to take risks and to ask hard questions will stay with us even after we send them out on their way to continue the good work that we started together. 
as we have discovered, and you too will in a moment, each and every confirmand has tried their hands at being a theologian this year, and each has succeeded. Here are some things they had to say about God. God does not seem like a person, rather a being that holds the power of love and hope. God loves everybody unconditionally and instills goodness in people's hearts. God is a symbol for what love is. Science is fact. I do not believe faith is fact. Each and every one of us has a conscience and God's relationship to each person is different. I don't think God is a thing. God is a thought. God is comfort. I don't think God is a physical being. I believe that God is a conscience that each and every one of us builds. I think God reflects a relationship to self. I feel as if God loves and forgives others in the same way that God does that for me. God seems to unconditionally love all other people, no matter if they believe in God or not. Here are a few thoughts they had on Jesus. Jesus, for me, is a manifestation of what God believes in. Jesus creates an easier road for me to get to God. Jesus, to me, is someone to think of as a role model while remembering that making mistakes is natural. I understand Jesus as someone who always forgave and cared for others. I know Jesus in my life as someone who doesn't care about my mistakes and trusts that I will learn and grow from them. And as we spent time with the Bible, we considered questions like, who wrote this? (laughs) Really? (laughs) Why was this particular story chosen to be included in the Bible? And how does this passage relate to something in our current day lives? So here are a few of their thoughts about the Bible. The Bible is symbolism. Every single sentence represents something. I don't believe some of this stuff happened, but it's still important even if it didn't happen. There are more important truths than facts that can be conveyed with metaphor. I think the beauty of texts, especially holy ones, is that they are flexible. I believe in the Ten Commandments, teachings of love, ways to love one another, yourself, and the world, this text helps me love myself and others with my whole heart and to be secure in myself. Our confirmation syllabus is full of big topics. You can see the list on page 13 of your bulletin this morning. And several of the students commented on concepts like religious pluralism, forgiveness, and meeting God through experience in their statements that they wrote. So here are a few of those addressed. I really think any, I really, wait, I'll say that again. I think to really understand any religion, you need to understand other religions. I want to learn more about other religions. I understand that the Christian church has been used to invalidate other religions and beliefs, and I hate that this is a part of our history. Religious pluralism is important to me, as I feel that each person's opinions and beliefs should be treated with respect. Of all the different things that God teaches, there is one teaching that stands out to me the most. That is the importance of forgiveness. God teaches us to forgive, And this is something that resonates with me in particular because I have often found it hard to forgive. And I believe it is important because people shouldn't be judged 
on their mistakes. Music can be felt and understood by anyone, no matter where they come from or what language they speak. Music connects us all like God. What is my purpose? My purpose is loving someone. It's very important to me. My purpose is hanging with my family. My purpose is going to classes. People need me for help. I help friends to pay more attention in class. Sometimes I sing choir songs and play piano. And finally, we ask these confirmands to think about their relationship to First Church, this place, and about how they fit into this family of faith. Here are a few of their descriptions of First Church. I feel blessed to have an amazing religious community where I feel safe to practice my belief and that I am loved for who I am, no matter my sexuality or gender. I've never had to hide a part of myself because of my church community's beliefs, and I am beyond grateful for that. I feel so connected to my church community, and I feel very safe here. I care a lot about women's rights, as well as disabilities rights, and more. It's important to have a community to talk to about issues like that. And I think a church is a good example of a community that takes issues seriously. Church can be a place of worship, but also a group of people who band together to get things done, even if it doesn't involve God. An example of this that really resonated with me was Hillary Hopkins, who identified as an atheist, but still came to First Church and did amazing work. Everyone has a different view of who or exactly God, religion, faith, Jesus, and church are, and I'm still figuring mine out. I may not know how I want religion to fit in my life right now, but I'm willing to figure it out over the next few years before making a definitive decision. This leads me to the decision that I will be confirmed and become a member of First Church in Cambridge. I'm excited and a little scared to be confirmed, but I understand that my beliefs will probably change over time, which I'm okay with. Confirmation will make me part of a community that I've been so proud to be in, and I hope I can continue to spread a message of love, acceptance, and justice with our church. I've been going to First Church in Cambridge for my whole life, and it is a great, caring community. Church is an important place for me because it is a place where people go to learn how to love and how to forgive each other. I feel like First Church welcomes everyone, especially people who are unsure and questioning, like me. First Church stands for welcoming everyone and anyone to explore the idea of God. Now, as I'm being confirmed and baptized, I'm going to take both of these values in with me. To me, the church is a place where people go to be a part of a community, to feel accepted and heard. I think that the church stands for forgiveness, acceptance, community, peace, and kindness. Where do I belong? I belong here, in Cambridge. Sometimes I belong in so many places and buildings in Cambridge. Sometimes I belong at church. I want to be a part of this community in some meaningful way. This community, this place where love and justice are made real, has been a reflection of God's strength and help and has been a refuge for each and every confirmand that we celebrate today. These young people have grown up in this congregation. They have been cared for and loved by this gathered body of Christ. You have seen them mature and change and meet challenges with grace, hope, and good humor. We know they have a good sense of humor. (laughs) 
And now we have a charge to all you people in the pews. We pray, we pray deeply, that you include them in the life of First Church in a new way. You've walked before them as elders in faith. Now, it's time to walk alongside them in this mutual journey of faith and discipleship. They are artists, actors, activists, athletes, leaders, prayers, environmental stewards, musicians, and people of deep, flexible, and agile faith. What a joy to welcome them all fully into membership among us today. And confirmance, one last thing. We will say one more time, no matter where this journey of life and faith leads you, you are always welcome here in this place. This is a spiritual home for you, and we love you. The world needs people like you, and we are so glad to walk with you in this ongoing journey of being committed to asking the question, what do I believe? Thank you. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and welcome again, everyone. What a day. We will continue this celebration of our confirmands and baptisans and of this warm and welcome community of nurturing. After church today, during our reception in Margaret Jewett Hall, there will be cake and uh, time for conversation with our confirmands and their families. You are warmly welcome to join us for that. Um, welcome, whether you're joining online today, uh, in person, here for the first time, here um, uh, after having been here for many, many years. Um, so glad you're with us today. Just a few other announcements in this full day. Looking ahead to next Sunday, it is Pentecost. We are th almost through our season of Easter. We're turning to a new season. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We invite you to wear red, a symbol of the Spirit. We will also have a few uh, new artistic installations to celebrate. One that will be on our lawn, we believe, with thanks to History Cambridge, there will be a bottle tree. Um, which was on the lawn of History Cambridge on Brattle Street. You may have seen it these past many months. It's um, a way of honoring enslaved persons on, in Tory Row that are connected with our history. That will be here for several weeks from Pentecost through Juneteenth. Very exciting that we'll have that way of witnessing and you can read about uh, the bottle tree in uh, your bulletins and after church, uh, next week, Henry Gates will be sharing one of his uh, installations with us as well in Margaret Jewett Hall. So join us for a special Sunday of celebration of the spirit and of, of art and of creativity and of, of our gifts. Um, other things coming up in your bulletins, uh, please read those carefully. And with that, I would like to introduce Casey Marsh and Phil Jones to give us a ministry moment about our upcoming musicale. Thank you, Dan. Don't all of those brilliant confirmands make you want to show some of your brilliance to First Church? <laughs> For instance, Peter Sykes doesn't know this, but he's not the only one here who can rock the doxology. I won't, I won't go on. <laughs> and we in 
invite all of you um, to come to our musicale, the First Church Musicale, which has not been around for a couple years, and we're very excited to bring it back. Um, I have not attended it, but many of you have in years past. Um, so if you have a song or a poem or a joke that you would like to share with us, we invite you to come on June 11th. It's in your bulletin on page 12. Um, and You can sign up online or tell Sarah that you've got something you've got to share. It'll be really fun. Thanks. Thanks. God be with you. Let us pray. Good morning, God. Good morning again. And what a day. What a day you have made. Our hearts rejoice and give thanks for wet ground and new life of spring, for this community, for this season of celebration and transition, for this day of confirmation. Let's pause for a moment, Holy One, time of sacred silence, and invite you to meet us where we are, to lift up whatever joy or sorrow whatever burdens or longings, prayers for ourselves, for loved ones, for our wider world. Open a channel, God, and clear a path now. Let our hearts and cries for peace be held and heard by you. Pray, God, for and with all who are suffering, waiting, unsure, alone, or afraid. We pray for and with all who are joyful, celebrating, lighthearted, and proud. We pray for peace in our world, for our economy on the brink, for our leaders to make a way out of no way. We pray for our planet in the midst of climate catastrophe of our own making. By your hearing and holding of our hearts, God, lift us up, remind us of your presence, your strength, your undying love. Go ahead and confirm in us all, O oh God, our need for you, our gratitude for you, our faith in you. Give us the gift again and again of your spirit made known in the eternal love of our brother and rabbi Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, let us show our friendship with Christ and our love for our neighbors by giving generously so that we may bear the lasting fruit of Christ's love. The morning offering will now be received. Gracious God, for the gift of this community, we give you thanks. Accept our gifts and guide us to use them to bring love and justice to this neighborhood and our wider world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
You can remain standing and don't worry, they're not leaving for good. <laughs> but we do need to mark the end of a year of field education for Carla and Ahmad. They have been working with a program with the Harvard Divinity School and we are grateful for their learning and teaching for the powerful relationship of a ministry that has emerged between us and for the fact that we are just getting started. But Ahmad is heading back to Louisville this week. We'll be spending some time working with his home church this summer. Carla will be here this summer, but working with a Harvard uh, program. She'll be with us next week and then um, for one or two other things in June. But we won't be seeing either of them as often. But when they return in early September, they will no longer be ministerial interns, but half-time staff. They will be our pastoral associates. Yes, let's celebrate that. Whew, is right. But today, let's honor and mark this first year with us. So let's raise our hands of blessing once more and let's say a prayer. Ahmad and Carla, we give deepest thanks to the Spirit for connecting you with us, for calling you here to learn and to serve. We thank God for the gifts of ministry already so alive in you, for the depth and warmth of your preaching and pulpit presence for the intentionality and wisdom of your teaching, for the care in your communications with us, for your faithful commitments to love and justice, whether through the Friday Cafe or GBIO. May God bless you as God has surely blessed us through you. And may you know how grateful we and God are for the gifts you have shared with this community. And now may God grant you time for reflection and rest, for consolidation and growth. May God give you openness to wonder about what is emerging in your lives and with us. And now let's say it together, church. When I say God is good, you say all the time. And when I say all the time, you say God is good. God is good. All, all the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Amen. Take care for now. And now, as a benediction, we offer to our newest members and to all of you these words from Deuteronomy, a blessing spoken by Moses to the people of Israel before they crossed over the River Jordan without him. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread. Because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. God will not fail you or forsake you. Beloved, go in peace to be the church. Amen. Amen. Amen.